Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to learn how to dynamically allocate and deallocate memory in C++, C, and RAW assembly. Now dynamic memory is really important if you're not aware of the amount of memory that you need at compile time of the application. So this allocates additional memory on the heap for you to use if you need to allocate additional memory while the application is running and executing. One really good example use case of this is if you have an array and you're not aware of how many values that you're going to need since you're going to be setting these values at runtime of the application. So maybe you need to allocate additional space to store extra values for your array, or maybe you need to resize the array and give some memory back over to the system to use. So let's get right into it and let's see what it looks like. Now I'm going to be running this on a Raspberry Pi, and I already have a couple folders and a couple stub applications that are going to be in C++, C, and then ARMv7 assembly. So we're going to begin with C++ here, and this is going to be the highest level view of memory allocation and deallocation. And this is going to be the most simple if you're trying to work inside of this language. Then we're going to move on to C, which is going to be a little bit lower level and just a little bit more challenging to implement before we move on to our last language in ARMv7 assembly, which is going to be the most challenging and the most complicated to implement, but it's going to allow us to get the lowest level and closest to the underlying instructions for the operating system. So let's first take a look at our C++ program. So let's move over to our C++ folder. And here is the stub program that has just a little bit of a C++ application to get us started. So let's go ahead and edit this. Now I already have a try catch statement in here that's going to handle if we have any errors while we're trying to allocate this. Now there's two keywords that we need to keep in mind while we're working in C++. These two keywords are going to be new and delete. So the new keyword is going to allocate a little bit of space and a little bit of memory to hold our dynamic values. And then the delete keyword is going to free up that memory once we're done with that and allocate it back over to the operating system to be in control of. So let's create a one dynamic integer value and allocate that memory and then go on and go ahead and delete that once we're finished with that. So let's go ahead and add some code and we're going to allocate space for one additional dynamic integer. So I'm going to declare that up here. So let's just insert that. And this is going to be of type int star since this is a pointer to a dynamic integer. So let's do int star as our data type and let's just call this num pointer, and we're going to set this equal to null pointer as kind of a default value. Now inside of our try catch statement, let's remember those keywords that we wanted to use. So the new keyword, remember, is going to be responsible for actually allocating the space to store our dynamic integer. So let's add that inside of our try catch statement just in case we run into any errors while we're allocating this memory. So I'm going to add a new space in here. Let's do num pointer equals new int. So now we have successfully allocated the memory to store that dynamic integer. So now we can just go ahead and set that value. So let's set our value to num pointer and we'll dereference that with our star over here. And we can do whatever integer we want. Let's just pick the number 42. So now we've successfully allocated that memory and set that value to our integer value 42. Now I just want to go ahead and print that out to the screen. So let's do C out and we'll call this dynamic number. And then we'll print out that dereferenced num pointer. So this is going to print the value 42. So let's just end it with a new line. Now this is going to print that value to the screen, but remember, now that we've allocated that memory, we are responsible for deallocating that memory. So let's use that delete keyword to free up this memory now that we're actually finished with it and we've printed that value to the screen. So let's go down here and all we need to do is delete num 
pointer. So this is giving that memory back to the operating system to be responsible for in case any other applications are needing to allocate or deallocate memory, or maybe the system itself needs additional memory. So that's all we need to do for C++. It's not too challenging. So let's just run this and see what happens. Now I'm going to compile my application and generate my executable. Looks good, no errors. So now we have this additional allocate executable. And if we run this, here we go. Dynamic number is 42. Now this dynamically allocated additional space and gave us a pointer to an integer value that we could use. Then we set that value to 42 in memory. And then we went ahead and deleted that memory since we were finished with it after we printed that value to the console. Let's move on to our C program. And so this is going to be a little bit lower level than the C++ program that we were working on. And let's see what that looks like inside of here. Let's move on to our alloc C. And let's start working on the stub that I've already created. Now we have our simple application, which is basically doing nothing except returning success at the moment. So let's go ahead and add our code. And this is going to be equivalent to what we wrote in the C++ application, but we're going to be working on this in the C version of this. So let's create our new pointer again. It's still going to be of type int star, and let's call this num pointer. But now we have two different keywords that we're going to need to be looking at. Now we're going to be working with malloc and free. So now malloc is going to be the keyword we're working on in C that is going to be responsible for allocating some dynamic memory. And then free is going to free up that memory once we're done with it. Now the difference between malloc as well as the new keyword in C++ is that the new keyword is a little bit more complex and it goes ahead and auto initializes an object instead of malloc in C, which doesn't do any kind of initialization. So let's create our new keyword. So this is going to be malloc. And then we also have to pass the size of the data that we want to use. So we have this really convenient size of keyword, and then we're going to pass an integer value of that. So it knows how much memory it needs to allocate for our program. So let's do size of int. So that's going to allocate new memory and the size of an integer that we're going to be able to use afterwards. Now one more thing is we're going to have to type typecast this to a pointer to an integer. So that same data type int star is going to typecast this so that we can put that pointer value inside of our num pointer variable. And now we've successfully allocated that memory. So let's do a quick check to make sure this memory allocation was successful. We don't have a null pointer before we go ahead and set the value of this dynamic variable. So let's just do a quick if statement. So if num pointer equals null, so that means our allocation was not successful, we're just going to go ahead and return one. So that's kind of meaning an unsuccess of the application. Otherwise, we can go ahead and set our value. So really similar to C++ syntactically here, we can just use star num pointer to dereference that and set the value at that location. And we'll just set that equal to 42, which is the same integer value that we used previously. Now remember, we have to use the free keyword to free that memory once we're done. So let's go ahead and print that value to the screen and then free that up. So I'm going to do printf. And we'll just do dynamic number and we'll print that integer value and then the new line and then add our dereferenced pointer here. So this is just gonna print the same thing to the screen just like we did in C++. So now let's go ahead and free num pointer. So we have allocated our new memory, made sure that we allocated successfully set our value, printed it to the console, and then freed that memory back to the operating system once we were done with it. So let's compile and run this. Let me do gcc allocate.c-o and then generate our executable. Looks like I've got a little bit of extra space in here. There we go. So now we have our new executable. Let's make sure that that prints the same thing and successfully runs just like the C++ program. 
Very nice. So dynamic number is 42. And that was the next stage of our allocation and deallocation. Let's move on to our assembly implementation inside of ARM v7 assembly. And this is going to be the lowest level implementation that gives us the most responsibilities to worry about while we're implementing this process. Now we can use malloc just like we did in the C application and call that, but this is inside of the C standard library. So let's instead use mmap and munmap as our two keywords to be responsible for while we're dynamically allocating and deallocating this memory. Now mmap allows you to map a file or a device into memory, but it does allow you to map memory with an anonymous file if you specify the flags. So this effectively lets us do the same thing. So let's go into our file and let's move on to alloc assembly. And here is our stub application that we're going to be working inside of. And let's just edit our allocate.s. Now, I already have a program kind of set up that's going to be responsible for deallocating the memory for us. So let's go ahead and call our mmap syscall. Now, making this system call directly allows us to invoke the operating system instead of using the C standard library call to malloc from inside of our assembly application. So let's go ahead and add some code. I have this function defined up here that already has our flags set. So all we need to do is make this system call so that it sees what flags we're wanting to set. All these flags are going to let us know that we want to let the kernel choose the memory address for the dynamic memory that we're allocating, as well as set the number of bytes that we're wanting to allocate in this example one page. So it also lets us set the protections for the memory if we want to be able to make it readable, writable, etc. Now let's go ahead and make our system call. So let's create a new line in here. Now we have to look up the system call number since we're calling this directly. So we can go to the Chromium OS docs, go down to our 32-bit version of ARM since we're working in ARM v7 assembly. And then all we have to do is find the mmap call, which defines the syscall number. Now the syscall number is going to be stored inside of our R7 register inside of ARM v7 assembly. So all we need to do is do move R7 and then the immediate value defined here, 192. And then this is going to let the system know what system call we're actually trying to invoke. And then we can use our system call instruction to actually invoke that mmap syscall. So this is going to pass all of these flags that we defined up here already, let the operating system know we want to call mmap, and then actually invoke that. So now the address is going to be stored inside of our R0 register to the newly allocated memory that we're trying to point to. Now, if the allocation was unsuccessful, we're going to get the value negative 1. So why don't we compare the value currently in R0 this is going to be the memory address of the new location where we're allocating our memory. And let's see if that is the value negative one. And if it is the value negative one, we're going to branch equal. And let's jump over to our label alloc failed. Let me just add my hash sign right here. So we're comparing the immediate value negative one. Otherwise, we should be good to go and go ahead and use this memory location to store our dynamic integer. So why don't we put the value 42 inside of this memory location that we have dynamically allocated. So I'm going to pick on our R1 register since we're going to use this to store the value inside of that memory location. So let's move the immediate value 42 temporarily into our R1 register. So now that we've done that, we're able to store that value into the memory location that we have dynamically allocated. So let's use our store register instruction, and we're going to store that R1 value into the memory address that is pointed to by the R0 register uh -oh. that was returned to us when we invoked the mmap syscall up here. Now that we've done that successfully and made sure we've properly allocated our memory, we can jump over and branch to the alloc exit. 
So this is going to skip over the alloc failed label and jump right over and pop us out of this current function. Now inside of assembly, we are also responsible for deallocating the memory that we're looking at. So if you look down here, I have already added the system call to deallocate the memory. So down here, we're calling the m unmap syscall, which is the immediate value 215, which is going to let the operating system know that this is the system call that we're trying to make. And then we pass in the value that is that was returned to us in the previous function, which is going to be inside of our R0 register. So that is the current memory address that we dynamically allocated that memory inside of. Now we have successfully called the mmap syscall to allocate additional memory for us, made sure that we had a legitimate pointer and the allocation did not fail. We set that value to the immediate value 41, and we go ahead and call printf to print that value to the screen, and we make sure that we cover our tracks and deallocate that memory by invoking the mUnmap syscall once we are finished with that value. So let's go ahead and run that application and see what happens. So let's do arm, Linux, GNU E, ABI, assemble. We're going to take our allocate.s and generate our object binary. Looks good, no mistakes in here. And then let's create our executable. Do arm, Linux, GNU E ABI, GCC. And I'm going to statically link that so we can get our printf value, which is inside of our C standard library. And we'll take our allocate.o object binary and generate our executable. So now all we have to do is run our allocate and make sure that we printed this successfully. And there we go, dynamic number is 42. So now we have successfully completed our allocation in raw ARM v7 assembly, where we allocated additional memory using the mmap system call. We set that value to the immediate value 42. And then once we were finished with that value, we called the mmap system call so that we could free that back to the operating system. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video. I have no boost left. I'm not gonna hit this car. Oh my gosh, truck, out of the way. Boost. <laughs>